Hey guys, Chris Elim here, and today we are going to edit drums in Cubase. Now, before we start, if this is your first time here on this channel, please click on the subscribe button below and the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. And share and like this video if the video is useful for you. All right, so let's jump in. Now, this is the third video of a mini series on uh, drum recording and editing in Cubase. If you didn't get the chance to watch the first two videos, I'm going to leave the link right on top here. Um, so now uh, we are going to work on the, the same song um, that I recorded in the last videos. So let's listen to the, the second part of the verse. All right, so now we can hear that at the last bar, uh, something went wrong. You know, we can hear some, some sticks. Uh, so I'm just going to solo the drums and have you listen to the end part. Okay, now I'm not going to keep that. Uh, it, it sounds like uh, the drummer was drunk or something, even though he wasn't because I was the one playing. Anyways, um, now let's edit that part out. Uh, I'm just going to recap a bit and just to explain to you that all the tracks... Um, the drum tracks are in a drum folder, okay? I explained that in the last video, so I'm just going to do it again. Um, and we have the group editing option here uh, in Cubase directly on the group folder, which is going to group all these events together, so it's way easier to edit. So I am going to open the lane um, of the first track, which is the kick drum. So I'm going to click on Show Lanes. Um, you can find the Show Lanes button on the inspector window on top on the top left or directly on the track. Now, if you don't see uh, that button on the track, just enlarge the track here, okay? So put that track a bit larger and you'll see the show lanes option here. So I'm gonna click on the first one and now we can see that I recorded four uh, different takes, okay? Um, the one on top, now the first lane is a cumulative of all the, uh, uh, the other events, okay? So uh, all the lanes here are represented by the first one. So when you uh, close the lanes, you see the general event basically okay so if i want to edit all of these events at the same time let's say i just want to cut uh, all of these events at the same point you know by selecting the scissors for example i can just cut the first one and it's going to apply the cut on all the following lanes if i want to edit only one specific lane i just click directly on the lane itself uh, so now my last bar is this one and I need to listen to what else I did on the top lanes. So I'm going to select the COM tool, which is the one tool here on top. And this is going to allow me to select another lane. So I'm going to select the lane on top of this one. Okay, this one sounds good. Let's listen to the first one. I'm just going to go back a bit. All right, so this one is good. Now I need to cut though, I need to make an edit here. So there's a few ways you can do so, okay? Uh, first, I can use my scissors and cut right on the top lane, directly on top, and it's gonna apply the cut on all the other events. And uh, go back to the Com tool, just select the top event for this section. Okay, so that works, okay? That's one way uh, you can do it. I'm just going to go back, undo this. Now, another way you can do it is to use the Come tool itself. Okay, so if I use my Come tool and I select uh, the first lane on top, and I just drag the section I want to listen to, I'm just going to go and use the Come tool, uh, make my selection, and by itself, it's going to make a cut. It's going to cut all of the events at that same point. And it's going to select at the same time the event I want to listen to. But the problem is it didn't apply it to all the following tracks because all of the other tracks, um, the lanes are not open. Okay, so for this one to work, the show lane option needs to be open on all the tracks. Um, and that doesn't make sense to me anyways. Uh, there's probably a good reason. I don't know the reason. If you know, let me know. Um, but even if the uh, group editing is activated, you still need to have all the other lanes open. But the weird thing is if I comp, you know, if I use the comp tool to just to, to listen to the other lanes, it's going to apply the comp function on all the other, uh, the other tracks. So, you know, but when you slice it, it doesn't. So my workaround is very simple. 
I just use the uh, range selection tool. I click anywhere within the track. And now the show lane option is applied to all the tracks within the same group. Okay, so that's a very fast way of doing so instead of going and open them manually, which is a bit longer. Okay, now that all the lanes are open, I'm gonna go back to my Com tool and select uh, that event. Okay, the one on top, and this is the one I wanna listen to, and there you go. So that's a very fast way to select one part of a segment and cut all the other events. Now, if you want, you can use the range selection tool uh, to only get rid of one uh, one lane, for example, one a part of an event within a lane. You can use the range selection tool to do so. So now, once I'm happy with my edit, okay, now this is what I want to keep. I want to keep that top event. Okay, I'm going to select, I'm going to listen to it in solo because I want to make sure the transition between the, the, uh, the events are smooth, okay? Yeah, it's not that smooth at the, uh, the entry point here. So what I'm going to do, uh, I'm going to use the scissors, okay? I'm going to cut right here, okay? Um, and then, yeah, I can just simply use the Come tool again. Select the top one, see what that sounds like. Fair enough, that's good. So, you know, uh, let's do a crossfade, okay? Because the out point here, okay, uh, the transition here is, we can hear a click. Okay, so I'm gonna fix that up by uh, creating a crossfade between these two events. So I'm gonna select one, click on Shift, select the other one, and click on X. And there you go, you have a crossfade. Um, now what I like to do, usually I double click on the crossfade on the top of the crossfade itself, and I click on equal power. So this way the transition, the crossfade is smoother. That's pretty cool. Now you can move the crossfade if you want. If you want to find the, the right point to put the crossfade at, you can move it around. Uh, but I'm going to keep it All right, so let's keep that. I'm going to listen to it with the music. Sometimes I am going to edit the event itself. Like, for example, on this part, I find that the snare and kick at the end of the field, the drum field we have, um, is a bit rushy. Okay, so I just want to fix that up. I'm just going to listen to it again. Okay, so I'm going to use my scissors in that case and just click on the segment itself. All right, I'm going to cut this one as well. And there you go. I'm going to move both of them by selecting them both. All right, move this over, crossfade. Okay, I'm just going to move this one as well. Um, I'm using the grid, you know, just as a visual guide, but I mainly use my ears to make my final decision. Uh, sometimes I don't, uh, I don't open the uh, crossfade properties to uh, to click on equal gain. I don't need to. If it sounds good, it sounds good. You don't need to uh, to do it. I'm gonna mainly do it when uh, when I find that the crossfade could be a bit more smoother. That sounds pretty good. So let's listen to the entire thing. Maybe some of you will ask me why I didn't quantize my drums. Now, quantizing drums is something you can do easily in Cubase. I even made a video on that maybe a year or a year and a half ago. Um, but this is not something that I do a lot, especially on my drums. Um, you know, I'd rather just edit a bit than having everything quantized. If I have a tight drummer in the studio, I won't need to quantize anyways. I'm going to quantize live drums when I need to uh, to sync them to a loop, you know, to a uh, an electronic loop, for example. Um, and if I have that loop playing at the same, the same time as the live drums, you know, sometimes I will quantize the live drums so everything is synced together and tied together. So that's a, uh, a situation where I use quantize on drums. Sometimes the tracks are too hard to edit and the best solution is just to re-record the whole thing. 
Okay, so um, that is pretty unfortunate when you don't have the drummer in your room or, you know, when when everything has already been recorded and there's no way of re-recording the stuff. You know, so to avoid this, uh, what I do is I, I make sure I have all that I need when I do a um, drum recording. Okay, so I make sure all of the takes are pretty good and that if there's already something that is going wrong, we're going to work on that part before leaving the session. Um, so this way I know that everything in my session are good takes. It helps me to be way more fast with drum editing. Um, so I may just make sure I don't have to edit a lot. Um, so that's basically it, guys. This is the way I edit my drums. Uh, and the most important thing here that I wanted you to understand and to know is um, the tools, the tools that I use in Cubase, the show lanes, uh, option, uh, the COM tool, the range selection tool, the folder and the group editing option. These tools are very useful and practical when editing drums. So that's going to be it for today. Now, if you have any comments or questions, or if you want to share with us um, your, your way of editing drums in Cubase or in any other uh, DAW, uh, please share your comments down below. And don't forget to like and to share this video if the video was useful for you. And don't forget to subscribe. If you're not subscribed to this channel, please subscribe and hit the notification bell so you don't miss a thing. All right, guys, until next time, see you.